If you're new to the Verticopter, or if you're considering downloading it, this video will help you get started on the basics. The Verticopter is a new converter plane by Garrow Aircraft that uses a coaxial tilt prop mechanism at the plane's center of gravity to accomplish short or vertical takeoff and landing. While still being in its concept phase, the Verticopter has already passed some exciting milestones towards its full-scale development, both in the virtual world as well as in the radio control prototyping phase. The virtual planes are made available to the public for a small fee so that anyone interested in this technology may get a feel for this plane and have hands-on experience piloting it. To download the plane, please visit the verticopter.com website and click on Fly It Today. To fly this plane, you'll need to download the X-Plane Flight Simulator demo from xplane.com. The demo version of the sim will let you fly any plane for 10 minutes. After this period of time, your control inputs will be ignored. Relaunching the program will reset your flight time again to 10 minutes. Purchasing the actual sim will allow you to install over 80 gigabytes worth of global scenery and flight times are no longer limited to 10 minutes. Now, what really sets X-Plane apart is its foundational approach to simulation. It employs blade element theory to realistically calculate and predict any given shape's aerodynamic property. Blade element theory will slice up the plane into many discrete pieces and their interaction with the air is calculated many times per second. In other words, the shape you enter for a plane will dictate its flight characteristics. X-Plane has been used in the development of several concept planes, including the Carter Copter, the Terrafugia, and Cirrus's new single-engine Vision Jet. The simulator has also proven invaluable in the prediction of the Verticopter's 1-6 to scale radio control prototype which was test flown at the NASA Ames runway by NASA's chief UAV test pilot while the cameras of Canada's Discovery Channel were rolling. While it was evident from simulator test flights that the prototype seemed to have a nose-up tendency, the actual RC prototype displayed the exact same tendencies. The fixes made to the simulator model were later carried over to the radio control model, correcting these tendencies. Also, X-Plane was used to find the best possible pitch gyro constants before punching them into the radio-controlled prototype. With the release of the Verticopter version 1.4, five scale sizes have been updated to its latest specifications, integrating lessons gleaned from the RC prototype and going through hundreds of hours of rigorous testing by numerous aviation industry professionals. The virtual Verticopter can be flown in its 1 to 10 scale variant of a mini RC, a 1 to 5 scale hobby sized RC, a half scale drone or unmanned aerial vehicle, a full scale two seater, and a double scale seven seater. Each of these planes displays realistic flight qualities for their size, weight, and power. Not only has the verticopter been modeled for precise and accurate flight behavior, but it has also been modeled with a very high level of detail in a dedicated 3D graphics program. The cockpit is rendered in crisp, fully three-dimensional space. The buttons, knobs, dials, and levers are all mouse activatable. The pilot's movements match the control inputs, and all of this just contributes to a very immersive experience. Because of this, there are some special settings that need to be made to X-Plane before things will work smoothly. Because X-Plane needs to calculate both the graphic representation of the flight, as well as the actual physical flight model of the plane, up to 60 times per second, a fast processor is required. One of the first things that happens when the computer's CPU isn't up to the task is that the plane will start bouncing and fluttering around uncontrollably. This is because, by default, X-Plane calculates one flight model per frame rendered. At lower frame rates, the time gap between flight model calculations becomes too large, and the compensations the computer makes to adjust the plane's attitude become overcompensations, which leads to the fluttering and bouncing around especially if the airplane that's loaded up is very detailed and has a low mass. This can easily be avoided by setting up the sim to allow for more than one flight calculation per frame rendered. This setting can be found under the Operations and Warnings dialog. Usually 8 works very well, but on slower computers this number will have to be adjusted to maximize the simulator's frame rate. Other adjustments such as texture detail, resolution, or visibility settings can be made to the graphics options in X-Plane to allow for smoother frame rates. Although X-Plane allows users to fly any plane with only the mouse and keyboard, a joystick is almost required for the verticopter. 
X-Plane can map any keyboard key or joystick button or slider to any function, and it is highly recommended you spend some time doing that prior to your first flight. The prop's tilt angle is not assigned to any key by default. Although it is activatable with a mouse, it's much easier to have a key, button, or slider assigned to this function. Setting up the keyboard and joystick is a matter of going to the Settings menu, going to the Joystick and Equipment Settings, selecting either the Joystick or the Keys tab, and after pressing a button or a key, selecting its function from the list of available options. It's also a good idea to disable any stability augmentation, as the verticopter is equipped with artificial stability already. Once you have all the controls assigned to joystick and keyboard functions, it's time to take the verticopter for a spin. X-Plane will start you off by default in the Cirrus Vision at the Innsbruck Kronobitten runway, which is the demo area. You can open up the verticopter by selecting Open Aircraft from the File menu. Let's load up the two-seater, also called the one-to-one -one scale version. The plane is ready for takeoff with engines running and props tilted upwards. Now all you need to do is advance the throttle. The plane will begin rising vertically at about a 75% throttle setting. Do not allow the plane to climb vertically too quickly. The oncoming air will find more resistance on the back half of the plane, causing the nose to pitch up. This, in turn, will cause a backward flight path, which the artificial stability system is not equipped to handle very well. It'll try to point the nose of the plane back into its flight path. This situation should be avoided either by avoiding a high rate of climb, or by tilting the thrust vector forward shortly after takeoff. To have control over a plane, there needs to be airflow over the control surfaces, which means that normally a plane needs to move through the air. Helicopters maintain control during hover by pitching the blades of the rotor at different angles as the blade passes through different phases of rotation. The verticopter does not have rotors, which would contribute significantly to its weight and complexity. Instead, it simply uses fixed-pitched propellers that are connected to each other via a fixed gear mechanism. They spin in a counter-rotating fashion, cancelling out the torque they produce on the airframe and eliminating the need for a tail rotor. This leaves the question, how can the verticopter be controlled during hover? Technically, the verticopter is marketed as a stovel, which means short takeoff and vertical landing. In its base configuration, it would rely on a slight forward speed or slight headwinds to create the airflow over the control surfaces needed for full maneuverability. However, a puffer system using compressed air is a solution Garo Aircraft is developing to allow for short periods of hover. The Harrier jump jet, a fighter jet capable of vertical takeoff and landing as well as hover, relies on a system that deflects around 15% of the engine's thrust to wingtip and nose and tail jets, called puffers, to maintain control during hover. The verticopter's puffers would use stored compressed air to accomplish the same goal. Air would be compressed by the engines prior to their use by the puffers, and this would allow for a limited time of controlled hover without sacrificing the engine's power during hover. Unfortunately, this feature cannot be modeled accurately in X-Plane, so the puffers are never going to lose pressure as they would in real life. But even with just slight headwinds, the need for puffers is superfluous. The small-scale planes do not feature puffers, but are still fully able to achieve VTOL performance. And for the larger planes, there is a button that disables the puffers, so it's possible to explore the limits of controlled flight in these planes as well. A simple rule of thumb while flying with puffers disabled is, if you're losing control, tilt the thrust vector forwards until you regain control.